Greetings hobbyists, this is Artans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at another new update to Ball Tool that nicely solves a workflow issue. So Ball Tool has been getting a number of updates recently, something that's really helped by the fact that in the new extensions of Blender 4.2, you get this update button here, which means you can update your add-ons without having to wait for a new update to Blender as a whole. Unfortunately, I've updated all of mine recently, so you can't actually see the buttons, but they are there normally. And it's really nice that these updates are coming pretty thick and fast in response to issues that might be a hindrance to people using Blender. Now I've just flipped to an older version of Blender. This is Blender 4.01. You can always see what version of Blender it is in the bottom right hand corner to talk about a video I made recently and how this has been changed with Ball Tool with a really nice change that for me is really helpful. So what I'm going to do is set up a similar situation to what I had before. If you want to miss this setup, you're more than welcome to skip ahead. But I will cover a few things people had questions about. So in this instance, I've just made a quad sphere. I'm just going to duplicate that two times. So I've now got three quad spheres. And to identify them, I'm going to give them different colors. Now, a question I did have is how we can do this in the viewport, not in the viewport shader. So what I'm going to do is come to material, add new material. And then if we change the color here, it's going to do nothing in the viewport. It's not relevant where it says surface. But if you scroll down to where it says viewport display as part of that material, you can change the color. So I'm going to change this one to a sort of bluey purple color. And I'm going to come to this one and add new material. And we'll change that to a green color just to make them easily identifiable. Let's go somewhere there. And then I'm importantly going to click and then shift click, press control and P and parent this to this second object. So we can see this here if I press Shift and Z, go into X-ray mode with this black dotted line, which isn't the easiest to see. Now we can actually change the color of that parenting line. I'm gonna to go to Edit, Preferences, and if we come to Themes and we go to 3D Viewport, this is actually part of the wire setup. So if I just come to Wire, let's put that up and put it to something yellow. Now, unfortunately, this does have the problem that it then turns all of the lines yellow, so that's a little bit annoying. But either way, this parenting is really handy because now if I just move this object around, it will move this object, but I can still move this object by itself. I'm just going to move that down there so we can see this yellow line. Now, if I select these two and press G to move them around, our parented object will move as well. The problem that I mentioned in a previous video is that if we do a destructive Boolean, so if I press Control, Shift and Plus, you'll notice this is turned green because it's Boolean together. And then this object jumps back to where it was before our parented object moves because this, what we call the child object, no longer has a parent to keep it with it. I'm just going to undo that till we get to this point. Now, we can get around this in a couple of ways. I can control and plus so that we have a non-destructive Boolean. And then if I hide that object, although we can't see it, there is this hidden object here that's still being parented too. But if I move this around because it's not parented, it's not going to move with it. But if I bring this back, I can G and move everything together. However, what can happen if I just press H is that if we've got a Boolean here and we apply it, we can still move this around, but our child won't move with it because the parent isn't there. We can make the parent visible and then move everything around. So great, it's all still working. But the problem is, is that if I ever want to clean up my scene and I decide I want to delete this again, it's just going to jump back. So a bit of a problem there, just in terms of workflow and us having to sort of reparent everything, which is a little bit annoying. I'm just going to go back and undo that so that we've got to this same scene. Now this was in Blender 4.0. If I just control and C and then copy those objects and come into the new version of Blender 4.2. And I should say that I've updated this with the update to ball tool. So if you haven't done that, you will need to do that and control and V to paste those in. We've still got exactly the same relationship going on. I've already changed my theme here to have that line in yellow. But now the change to ball tool that I really love is that if I click and shift click and do this destructively, do watch the yellow line. If I press Control, Shift and Plus, and it becomes one object and we've deleted the sphere that was here, you'll see that this yellow line has automatically jumped, I'll do it one more time, automatically jumps to the new object. So effectively, Ball Tool has recognized that this parent is being deleted and effectively made an adoptive parent, I guess, maybe a foster parent for this object to keep it where it originally was and so that we can move it around 
still in a similar way. Now for people interested in a destructive workflow or just keeping their scene collection quite tidy by deleting unused objects, this is massive. It's such a simple change, but it's so useful in terms of it being there. So I just wanted to highlight that as this is a bit of a correction over that old video, which now doesn't have this as a problem if you've updated Bortle. I also just wanted to say thanks to Nick, who is the creator of Bortle. It's always quite humbling as a creator of a relatively small channel when an add-on creator, especially of something as important as Bortle for Blender, has watched one of your videos and takes the time to message you and say, look, we've changed this, you might want to be aware of that. So really cool. And again, I think it really shows that those add-on creators really want to do the best for the community and are doing a lot behind the scenes that we often don't think about. Hopefully you found that interesting. If you think it deserves it, please hit the like button so that YouTube shares the video around more. And if you want to see more Blender content or keep up to date with all of the changes to Blender as they happen, feel free to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Have a great day, guys.